Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we have something that truly confounds me and what's now become a common event, synchronicity is once again at work. Upon researching the railways of the past and the engines that powered them, I began to divulge into other transportation powered by steam. This led me to the first steam powered boat and its inventor, who just happens to be from my hometown of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. What's truly amazing about Robert Fulton is the vast array of his work. The definition of a renaissance man, Fulton has inventions in the arts, engines, railways, canals, boats, and even their warship varieties. Being from Lancaster myself, I always knew Robert Fulton was a relevant inventor. We have memorial plaques, buildings, and roads all named after him. What we're not taught in schools, however, even locally, is the sheer importance this man had on the history of America. From his birth in 1765 in what was at that time British Lancaster to his inventions as a young teenager in 1777 up until his death in 1815, Robert Fulton pioneered multiple facets of what would shape the entire landscape of America. Much like Nikola Tesla, Robert Fulton has a spectacular history which has him traveling the world, engaging with the leaders of all first world nations, inventing things that would change how humanity functions, and somehow, throughout the passage of time, being forgotten or misrepresented. Even his Wikipedia page, while informative, does little justice to the sheer magnitude of his inventions. Fulton began his career as a painter in Lancaster. After his father passed away, he moved to Philadelphia. Within six years of painting, he saved himself enough money to purchase a farm and the surrounding land near Pittsburgh. He moved his widowed mother there and his family in 1785. Then, by 1786, Fulton moved to Europe to further his career. Now, as Wiki says, in 1793, Fulton became caught up in the canal craze, which was sweeping over Europe. And then by 1794, Fulton had designed and patented the first dredging machine in the entire world which was used to deepen and angle the earth below the water. His dredging machines would change the history of the inlet waterway and begin the rapid succession of canals being built all around the world. While involved in this canal craze, Fulton also began dabbling in the idea of a steam-powered ship. While others in the late 1700s had proposed boats that would be powered by steam which would turn an oar, uh, much like a man-powered boat, Fulton envisioned and later designed and built the first steam engine ship and his ship was powered by rudders, not oars. Britain, where Fulton was staying at the time, did not initially back his endeavor, however, for the steamship, and for this reason, he moved to France, where he attempted to put his blueprint into construction. While in France, he was attempting to secure funds for the steamship, and he basically messed around and invented the submarine. Of note, about France at the time, they were in the First French Republic. Uh, it barely lasted one decade, but it was the first Republic of France that was not under royal rule. Um, and to me, it's truly enticing to wonder what changes were occurring at this time period and what technologies of the past were being unlocked or rediscovered. Now, as far as the submarine goes, not only did Fulton provide a design with specifics and blueprints, but he actually carried out the construction and testing of the submarine himself. His submarine was called the Nautilus. And here is what Wiki says about the Nautilus. It was 21 feet three inches long and uh, six feet four inches wide at the beam propulsion was provided by a hand crank screw propeller the hollow iron keel was the vessel's ballast tank flooded and emptied to change the buoyancy two horizontal fins diving planes in modern terms on the stubby horizontal rudder controlled the angle of the dive overall the nautilus resembled a modern research submarine such as the nr1 having a long teardrop hull the design included a observation dome, somewhat similar in appearance if not function to the conning tower of later submarines. When surfaced, a fan-shaped collapsible sail, reminiscent of those on popular Chinese ships of the time, could be deployed. Air, beyond that enclosed within the vessel, could be provided by a snorkel constructed of waterproof leather tanks. So, furthermore, Fulton didn't stop there. Um, after he was done with his submarine, uh, he decided he would also invent the world's first torpedoes. Originally, he called them carcasses, which would be brass-filled balls carried behind the submarine Nautilus, and then they would attach silently to enemy ships. A fuse with a timer of roughly 18 minutes would trigger upon attachment to the enemy ship, 
which would give the Nautilus crew enough time to crank away. Crank as in the rudder of the small submarine was powered by a hand crank. Um, the brass balls could contain up to 200 pounds of gunpowder. Further inventions with the Nautilus were uh, copper globes, which are very similar to the, the brass balls uh, or the torpedoes. The copper globes would float outside the submarine um, and they would contain up to 200 feet cubed of air, which would last the crew at least four and a half hours. And they don't go into it uh, anywhere that I could find, but I couldn't figure out how they actually get the air from the brass ball outside of the submarine into the submarine. But they are saying here that uh, they do have brass balls filled with air that could provide the crew four and a half hours of air. So Fulton made this submarine, the Nautilus, the first of its kind in the world, created torpedoes for the Nautilus and also developed ways to store air outside of the submarine. Later, Fulton also discovered while inside of the Nautilus that compasses work the same underwater as they do on the surface. This may seem like a minute detail, but until this time period, humanity simply did not know this. Fulton's Nautilus also had, as mentioned earlier, uh, the viewing globe, similar to modern submarines, which allowed him to view the ocean and the rivers outside of the submarine. Uh, while using this design, Fulton discovered he did not need the candlelight, which he had brought with him, and uh, he could just use the actual light from the sun if he traveled during the day. Fulton carried out over 10 dives in the Nautilus submarine for the French government during the reign of Napoleon. Fulton even carried out multiple tests with the torpedoes or carcasses, which successfully destroyed boats up to 45 feet in length in testing. Initially, Fulton had the full support of Napoleon and the French government, but upon the final tests, before a large amount of subs were to be constructed, a storm hit France, and unbeknownst to Fulton, the Nautilus was damaged. Upon commencement of the dive and the test, Napoleon, never one for patience, dismissed Fulton as a liar and a charlatan, and asked him to leave France. Apparently, after this, Fulton went back to Britain and gained interest in the Nautilus there. However, due to issues arising from war, Britain was unable and unwilling to provide backing for Fulton's plans, and later they dropped the development. Discouraged with this and with the little show he had for his steamship, Fulton left Europe, even going as far to leave the plans and the blueprints for his Nautilus and the torpedoes behind in Britain. These plans and blueprints were lost and forgotten for over 100 years until they were rediscovered in the early 1900s Fulton, not having realized his dreams of either the steamship or his submarine seeing commercial success, moved back to the United States in 1806. And by 1807, he had finally fully designed and constructed his steamship. His completed steamship was called the North River Steamboat, but was quickly renamed the Claremont. This ship was able to carry passengers from New York City up the Hudson River to the capital of Albany in roughly 32 hours. This was a journey of over 150 miles. This steamship development would revolutionize travel on the United States waterways. Alongside the new canals being constructed every day using his patented dredging machines, he basically changed the way Americans were able to travel around the colonies at the time. Fulton then developed the steamboat, the New Orleans, and its subsequent maiden voyage from Pittsburgh, PA, to New Orleans, Louisiana. This was less than one decade after the Louisiana Purchase and the first documented voyage through its immense riverways and territories. Fulton, while on this voyage, found canals that were pre-built which allowed the full journey to be completed, setting a precedence for the rest of the nation and giving them confidence to travel westward and southerly by these waterways. Fulton's final major achievement was the 1814 invention and construction of the Demologos, 
or Demo Logos. Demo Logos. Which you may have seen before if you're familiar with this sort of esoteric history research. The Demo Logos was the one and only floating battery of its kind, created during the War of 1812. It was basically a floating castle, with the main ingenuity coming from the steam-powered engine being positioned in the dead center of the craft. This provided armored protection on all sides and later became commonplace in similar warring vessels going forward. The Dimologos was immense and appears to be probably the most important craft that was constructed pre-Civil War. Robert Fulton died in 1815 due to tuberculosis in New York. He was then buried in the Trinity Church Cemetery. Trinity Church being a magnificent building, which at the time stood as the tallest in New York City and one of the tallest churches in the world. Robert Fulton was then commemorated and memorialized all around the world, including both in France and in Britain, but mainly in Lancaster, PA, where you have the opening of the Fulton Opera House, also known as Fulton Hall, in the mid-1800s, as well as the creation of the Fulton National Bank, which also operated out of Lancaster. In conclusion, we have the character of Robert Fulton, a poor boy born in British Lancaster, PA, only to hit his teenage years and then develop the dredging machine to build canals to develop the first submarine, the first torpedo, to be the first to use compasses deep underwater, the first to develop an apparatus for providing air underwater. And then he returned to the USA to develop his steamship and his warship. This is a man who met with leaders all around the world, kings and queens, and he met with Napoleon, only to go throughout his life feeling like a failure because he couldn't reach his enormous goals. This is a man whose history has been all but hidden in the books. This is a true Renaissance man. A man that if you walk down the street and ask someone who Robert Fulton is, do you think they'd be able to tell you? Hopefully this was informative for you. Hopefully you learned a little bit or at least enjoyed your time here. Uh, thank you for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, all the normal spiel, and I'll see you on the next one.